Heyo, hello, hello, how are you? This is Elf coming from Beamus Crafty Corner, and today we're going to be talking about this, this right here. Uh, we're going to be doing some paper piercing, and uh, I'm going to walk you through it real quick. It's it's super, super simple, but uh, I'm going to walk you through this real quick, so I'm going to get out a list of supplies, and I will be right back. For this one, you're going to want foam, a book, whatever it is that you poke into. Um, I like my pokey tool for this, but you could use a push pin or like the, a piece of wire from a paper clip, but you don't want something that's really super thin. You want something that has a little bit of heft to it, okay? Something, you know, structure, a cutter, and then you're going to want some highly contrasted paper. So for this one, I mean, you don't get much more contrasted than this. Black and white. Okay, so I'm going to do this one in black and white. And you can either do this freehand, which is what I did on, where did it go? Here it is. Which is what I did on the demo. This is, this is just freehand. Okay. Or you can use a pattern. Now patterns are easy and it, really easy to find. Um, you can go to Pinterest and uh, you can search paper piercing patterns or tin patterns. Either one of those is going to work. Okay. Um, we'll 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 talk about tin later. For now, <laughs> we're just going to talk about piercing uh, piercing on paper. Okay. So couple of things I need to do to prep here. One is going to be to cut out what, uh, you know, what I'm going to be piercing. The other one is to get my tag cut. So I'm going to get my tag cut and then I'll be right back and we will get started on this. Okay. I'll be right back. So, first thing is to see if what you're going to be using is going to work, okay? So what I do is I just kind of put some holes in at random, just to see in my top piece. Now, you're going to have the eruption, see the eruption on the back here? We want to get rid of that, okay? And for that, a nail file comes in real handy. Um, just kind of rub it off. And then go over your pattern again. Just poke your needle through. Just to make sure that you got all of that off the back. You want to be able to see light through there. Let me get let me get the little light out so we can do this. Okay. All right. So once you've got that, then you're going to test it by putting it over your other piece of paper. And this is going to tell you if the odd item that you're using to poke your holes is big enough. Okay. For your liking. All right, so nail file, sandpaper, whatever you got. Now, another thing that's kind of helpful here is some low tack tape. All right, so we're gonna be doing our piercing, our piercing on our dark color and then having our light color in the background. So I'm gonna put this on here. It doesn't matter what direction I put it in, okay? And then I'm gonna take my pattern And I'm just going to kind of cut this out. Doesn't have to be perfect. But this is going to give me a really good idea of where it's going on here. And when I have it where I want it, then I'm going to use some low-tack tape to hold it. Okay? Okay. 
Now you can use painter's tape if that's what you have. By all means, let me get a couple of pieces here. I think I might need three. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of tack this down. And you can see I'm going onto the foam as well. That's to help me hold it down. I think I want one more down here. Okay, so once you have it down, and you're gonna take your needle, your pin, whatever it is, find a start point. It could be a top, the middle, the bottom, whatever. I'm going to do the pattern, so I'm going to start right here, and I'm just going to start poking my holes. And I'm going to hold this down because I don't want it to jump around, because if it jumps around, then I could get my lines out of place, and we don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of these, and then we'll move on to the next step, okay, which is going to be sanding the back, all right? So I'll be right back as soon as these are all done. Okay, so I removed the tape, and what we're going to do is peel this up. Now, it's going to be a little bit stuck. <laughs> Um, it's possible that it could be a little bit stuck because uh, you're pushing it into the holes. And then we're going to turn it over and we're going to use uh, an emery board or, you know, if you've got sandpaper, use sandpaper. Um, and I'm just going to go over all of this. And I just want to make sure that I get all of that heavy paper off the back. Okay. And I want to make sure that I can see my light clearly through all of my holes, which I can. So once I have all of that done, then I'm going to bring in my other piece, my background piece. And one of these is going to go on the other. So I'm going to go ahead and add my adhesive. you would think that I would learn when I'm going to use this glue to make sure that I clear this before I get started, right? Yeah. Now, if you want to use your Xyron to do this, run it through your Xyron, whatever you want to do, however you want to adhere this. Okay. line this up really well press it down all right we're gonna let this dry now I don't want to do anything on the front of it like this because um, I don't want to tear it but I can do this on the back just to make sure, you know, that I get it nice and adhered. All right. All right. So you can see that you can see all of that through there. Now, if you have a hole, like right here, I have one hole that's like, yeah, just go in there with my pokey tool and kind of give it a little bit of a scratch just to open it up a little bit. Sometimes there's just a little piece of it that's hanging on. If you just give it a little scratch, it will go away. Can think of it as poking, but don't poke. <laughs> okay, so that's that part. Now, I'll be back and we're gonna finish this up. Okay, 
so to finish this up, uh, I'm going to be inking the edge with some black ink just to, you know, cover up the white so it doesn't stand out quite so much. But as I said, you're going to want to use very high contrast here. Now, you could use a metallic in the back if you want it to. That would look really great under there. Okay. So I got a little bit of ink on there. And I don't know why, but I thought I had ribbon that had musical notes on it. But apparently, I do not. Now, I can add some washi tape to this if I want to. Or, uh, you know, some stickers or some do some stamping would be great on here if I had, like, some musical note stamps. I could put some little musical note stamps on here if I wanted to. Maybe emboss those. But today, we're just going to be finishing this out. I'm going to be using my slot punch. Because I like it. So I'm just going to put this on here. Get it about even. Pop a slot in there. And then I'm just going to do this in black and white. Since, you know, it's black and white. So let me just grab some of this. And this kind of iridescent white. I think that'll look cool. And I'm going to use the winder. There's two of them in here. One's a little bit wider than the other. Here we go. All right. Get this all tucked back in there. Okay. Then, I'm going to take these down. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, half will be good. I can trim anything else off I want. There we go. And then I'm just going to thread these through the slot. If I can get them to cooperate. And we'll use our tiny attacher, also known as a stapler. And we'll just staple in there and then we'll go ahead and give it a haircut okay so that's it those are our paper pierced tags okay um, we're going to be using this technique on another project pretty soon, and um, I, I think it's going to be awesome. So uh, if you want to practice a little bit, a tag is a great way to get started on this. Journal card. Mm. Okay, that's it, guys. That's all I have for you this week. Uh, if you're new here and you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that button for me and subscribe. Like me, ring my bell, share me with all your friends. And then your friends, my friends, my friends can be your friends and our friends can get to be friends. Before you know it, we have a giant crafting community. I do go live on Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays. And on Sundays, we play games. There's prizes involved. Um, I post videos typically twice a week, usually Monday and Wednesday, but it could be more than twice a week and it could be more than, you know, could be different days. So, um... I never really know for sure. <clears throat> but if you want to know what I've got going on, you can check out the community tab here on my YouTube channel or go over to my Facebook group. There's a link in the description box below. And both of those have a featured listing that will give you all of the who, what, when, why, and where of my digital life. 
all the classes I have coming up, all of the projects I have coming out. If there's something that you'd like to see my take on, go ahead and send me a video. And if I use it and complete the project, I'll send you the fruits of my labor and my heartfelt thank yous. Uh, until the next time, guys, stay well. Bye-bye.